Turkana is the second largest of Kenya's 47 counties. This place is known all over the world as the cradle of humankind. It is also here that you will find some of the world's oldest tools. Yes, some tools which scientists say were in use more than 3.5 million years ago. Other highlights of Turkana County include the gorgeous beaches of Elia Springs and the Kalakor standing stones that can be seen on your way from Lodua down to Kalakor. Stories say that these standing stones were once human beings. Yes, a group of dancers dancing to the rhythm and that an angry witch had cast a spell on them and they had turned into stones. <laughs> but that is not the story that I want to share with you today. The story I'd like to share with you today is a story of the people who are found here in Turkana County. Yes, the story of the people and of a woman who is known not just locally, not just in Kenya, but in Uganda as well, and who is known to be the mother of the Turkana community. Her name was Neyeche. And in fact, the Turkana community of Kenya and the Jia community of Uganda both claim to be of the same ancestor, Nayeche. It is said that the Turkana of Kenya and the Jia of Uganda once lived at a place called Apuli, which could be either in today's southern Sudan or in Ethiopia. And that about 500 to 300 years ago, they began the migration to the places where they currently live. And this woman, Nayeche, is well respected by both the Jie and the Turkana. So, exactly who was this woman? Growing up, it was clear that Nayeche was different from the other children of her mother and father. She loved taking care of the animals, of the humans, but she especially had a close bond with other aspects of nature. For example, when her agents were busy playing house or pretending to be herding livestock, Nature could be seen spending long hours alone walking in the forest or just sitting by the riverside looking at the water for hours and hours on end. As if she and the water were having a conversation. Therefore, it did not surprise anybody that when she grew up, she chose her aging father's trade. Yes, the skill of taking care of sick animals. And she loved it. With just one look, Nayeche could tell what was wrong with a cow, or a goat, or a camel. And she especially loved tending to the pregnant animals and taking care of the smaller ones until they were old enough to join their parents out in the fields. And it is during the course of this work that she realized that something was changing. Yes, something was different. More and more animals were looking sickly, even though there was enough pasture and enough clean water to drink. The animals didn't give birth to enough offspring or as often and up in the air, in the trees. The birds sounded different. Their voices were not as cheerful as they used to be, not as melodious, but they sang as though there was a foreboding, as if the animals knew something that the human beings did not. And after many days of deliberation, Nayeche decided to go and talk to the elders about this. My elders, I have been observing the animals, the goats, the cows, the camels, the birds the air, and the rivers. And I think nature is trying to tell us something. I think something is wrong. 
But Nayechi said, No, my elders, the birds are singing something different. The look in the eyes of the camels and the goats and the cows are telling a different story. I think that something bad is coming and coming soon. The elders were not happy about this. Why would Nayechi? We have our fortune tellers. We have our medicine people. They have not told us anything about any bad thing coming to us. And look, we have not been blessed like this before. The grass is green, the rain is falling. Oh, come on. Well, just go about your work. Leave those things alone. Not long after this, Nayeche left. Some people say that she left because of the disrespect with which she had been treated by the elders. Others say that her brothers chased her away, for they felt that she was becoming too assertive for a woman. But what everyone agrees is that one morning, Nayeche walked away and was never seen. Not long after she left, a famine struck the land. The grass turned from green to brown. The rivers turned into muddy pools of water and soon into dry beds. The animals grew thinner and thinner every day and began to fall off, dead. The people were becoming more and more hungry and there was tension all over the land. Something had to be done. The warriors and the elders gathered for deliberation. And it is here that Ebei, one respected warrior who had led the warriors into many different raids, many different wars, and brought them back home victoriously, suggested, well, let us have the women going out farther and farther to look for the wild fruits and edible seeds for us. And I will lead the warriors to take the animals farther away where we can find shelter for them, where we can find green grass for them to eat. And even though this was done, it did not work. The animals, already weak from hunger, fell dead on the way to the pasture. And the women came back home empty-handed. The elders decided to do something different. And they agreed to gather together for a day of prayers and offering a sacrifice to Akuchi, their god. And on this day, the whole community gathered, praying out to their God that he may be appeased, that he may release rain to come down to them. And as the elders looked at the sacrifice they had done, they could hear saying, the intestines, they say that very soon we will get a sign. Not long after this, something else disappeared. In the middle of the night, Engiro, the treasured gray bull with big horns and a massive big body, just broke out of his shed and set off. When this was discovered the next day, the elders wondered what wrong had they done that misfortune after misfortune was coming to them? It had been hoped that Engiro, the prized bull, would populate the herds once the famine had gone. No, this could not be left as it was. A decision was quickly reached 
that a bay and the other warriors should follow the bull's tracks and bring it back home. And immediately they set off. It was not an easy journey. The sun was hot. They were hungry and they were weak. And with the famine, it had made the wild animals even more aggressive. Yes, the hyenas, the snakes, the scorpions were also out looking for food, especially at night. And this forced the warriors to only travel during the day and rest at night for their own safety. Sometimes they would follow the wrong set of footprints and this would waste so many hours of their search. Still, they kept on walking. It was a long and tiring journey. The food they had brought with them finished. The water was gone. They had not expected to spend so many days on the search. I mean, how hard was it to find such an impressive bull, such a bull that stood out with its big proportions at a time when there was famine, when everyone else was thin and skinny. And yet, for some reason, it always seemed that the bull was always one step ahead of them in the real sense of the word. One evening, the warriors arrived at a place that was quite different from the terrain they'd left behind. The air was cooler. The grass was steadily becoming greener and greener and greener. And was that a river they could see in the horizon? Oh, they took off towards the river, happy to quench their dust in the waters. And because it was getting dark, they knew they had to look for a place to spend the night. From a distance, they could see a hill and they decided to have shelter up the hill so they could be on the lookout just in case they were attacked by unknown people. But as they began climbing up the hill, something stopped them still in their tracks. For high up the hill was something that shone and flickered in the darkness and they could see some shadows around it. They were shocked at what they saw. Was that not Nayeche, the woman who had disappeared one day and never came back? And next to him, was that not Enyiro, the treasured bull whose footprints they were following? Nayeche smiled and called them from the shadows. She welcomed them to her home and gave them some food to eat, some nuts to have alongside the food, asking them what their business was. They explained how they had walked for so many weeks following the footprints of this same bull who was right there and asked how the bull had come to Naeche's possession. Naeche on her part explained how so many years ago she had set off in search of an answer and how she had found herself at this hill and made a home here and how not so many weeks ago she had seen the bull. At first she had not been sure what it was but when she saw it she knew it for what it was. The treasured bull from her people and it had come and she had given it some space around the fire. And the next morning, she had left to go and look for wild fruits to eat. And the bull had left to go and graze. And how she had been surprised that that evening, the bull came back. And this had gone on for days and days and days until the warriors showed up. The young men stayed with Nayeche for a few days as they recovered their strength. And they laughed what they saw. The sunrises and the sunsets that could be observed from the strategic hill where Nayeche lived. The sun that caressed their hills softly. The breeze that came from the river and the lake that could be seen far in the distance. The land unoccupied by people but rich with wild berries and fruits like Eongomo, Edong, Ngakalalio, Eongol and Ngakotor were available and in plenty. Why don't you come here and stay with me? Nature said. The next morning, the young men 
set off to go back to their home to tell the elders about their journey. But the gray bull and Nero would not go with them. No matter how many times they thumped it and kicked it, and Nero remained still. Surprised, they went back home and explained about how the journey had gone and how they had found not just the bull, but also Nayeche. And explained about how the journey had gone and how they had found not just the bull, but also Nayeche, and that the bull had refused to go home with them. Led by a bay, the warriors also said that. And she had extended the hospitality to them. She was willing to host them at her beautiful home where things were all well, where there was pasture, where the animals could enjoy, their children could thrive. Some of the elders did not like this. We are not going anywhere. Go back and bring that bull with you. And if he refuses, then kill him and bring us the meat. Yes, we shall feast on the meat of a hero, the bull. But Ebe and the other young men had already made up their minds. They took their cattle, took their camels, took their wives and their children, and they set off to the last place they had met with Nayeche. And Nayeche welcomed them with open hands and showed them different places where they could settle. She gave this group here, that group there, that other group over there, and this other group over there. The land agreed with them, and they and their animals thrived. And they have lived here, generation after generation. And as they increased, some of them went down to stay near the river and became some farmers. Others moved farther away towards the lake and became fishermen. And they loved their land and they called it Turkan, a reminder of the home they once had that had so many caves. And they called themselves Niturkana. And sometimes they are called the people of the Grey Bull. And Nayeche? Nayeche is still remembered as the mother of the Turkan. If you visit Turkana County, you can choose to spend an evening at the Ferguson Gulf. And from here, you can watch the pelicans and the flamingos flapping around as the local fishermen go about their trade for an even more fulfilling experience. Be sure to take part in the annual Turkana Cultural Festival. This festival attracts not just local people, but people from different countries, from neighboring Ethiopia and Southern Sudan, and people from around the world. At this festival, you can feast your eyes on traditional housing of the Turkana people on their beautiful beadwork and amazing baskets woven by hand. Oh, enjoy their music and their dances. And of course, no Kenyan celebration is complete without food. So make sure you enjoy some Nyama Choma and the local cuisine. Mamma, 